So I have a bit of a confession to make. If you can believe it or not, I wasn't always into bikes. In fact, there was a time uh, not too long ago when I was probably the furthest thing from being a cyclist. I was driving, I was really unhealthy, I was smoking up to two packs of cigarettes a day, and then things changed. So in this video, I want to talk a little bit um, about my bicycle origin story. I feel like many of you might be able to relate to it. And also because, uh, you know, so much of how I found bikes and how I fell in love with bikes uh, kind of determines a lot of the content on the channel and also how I talk and present it. All right, so let's go back in time. I grew up in Los Angeles, um, you know, the center of car culture, and learned how to ride a bike as a child, but really never ventured off beyond uh, the sidewalk. So some people have these great bicycle origin stories where their parents biked or they met on a, on the, during the Trans Am and it was just so imbued into their family history. Uh, that is not my family. There's nothing about uh, my family's history that would indicate that I would be interested in anything like bikes or the outdoors, none of that. So as I grew up, of course, you know, you go to high school, you get your driver's license, you forget about the bike. Uh, I went to college at uh, UCLA, didn't think about cycling at all. And you know, in college you pick up habits. That's initially when I started smoking cigarettes just because uh, it was cheaper than food. I was holding down uh, three jobs as I was a, as I was a student uh, to pay for book. And uh, when it came down to either eating or buying a pack of cigarettes, you know, financially, I could spend less and not be as hungry. I know it makes no sense now as an adult, but in those early years, it just, you know, it, it seemed to make sense in my head. So fast forward a couple of years after college, I've had a couple of jobs uh, as a content creator, as a designer at a creative agency. Uh, but, you know, I'd landed a job where I was doing design work uh, remotely for an office in the Bay Area. Living by the beach, you know, there's a great bike path but in, in Long Beach and everything, but still not a cyclist. What ultimately created that initial spark for me uh, was that my truck died. And being supremely lazy, I didn't want to go through the trouble of getting it fixed. And since I didn't have to commute to work, um, I decided to see if I could get along without driving the car. And in my head, I'd framed it as an experiment. Somehow by, by framing it as an experiment, as something, as something temporary and as something that I could study and learn from, uh, it made it like, it made it more approachable, even fun, kind of like a game. So no car, decided not to replace the car. And I started walking. I would bring my laptop with me down to the local coffee shop, uh, do my work remotely. And I noticed a couple things uh, right off the bat. And one of those things was how walking even just short distances, I was getting short of breath and I could feel just all this congestion in uh, my chest. So after a couple of months of that, I decided to, to stop smoking also. So my truck died, it motivated me to start walking um, and also quit smoking. And one thing I learned about walking is that it's not very efficient or fun. It's really slow. Uh, so that's when I started uh, experimenting with transit, taking the bus, taking the light rail around Los Angeles and using that to uh, explore the city. And it was fun. It, was, it actually seemed like a game. Up until that time, I had not navigated around uh, Southern California area within anything but a car. But I was surprised at actually all the options that were out there if you're willing to try it. Ultimately, after the, the walking and transit phase, I experimented briefly with uh, inline skates. Yes, rollerblades. And again, better than walking, but still not very good for carrying things like a computer or a camera. And it was around this, this time in my life that Laura and I met. Uh, we were neighbors down in Long Beach. Uh, we moved in together. At one point, I decided to borrow our neighbor's bike and really fell in love with riding. It was, uh, it was a lot more stable and you could carry more stuff than inline skate and you could go really fast, but it was still fairly hard for me. And at that time, I would say it was around 2008, 2009, uh, when you'd go to any bike shop, the focus was still just pure racing. Uh, I had discovered bike touring, was trying to outfit my bike, and no bike shops carried uh, racks or decent panniers or brook saddles. I'd go in a shop and, and they'd look at me like, why, why would you want to do that to your bike? In terms of stuff online, I think there was crazy guy on the bike and that was about it. There weren't you know, the, the, the wealth of resources and the people doing these trips 
um, back then. But still, I stuck through it. Uh, despite the fact there wasn't like a really good support network. I think most of the information I gleaned about bike touring and, and bike commuting was off of bikeforums.net. There weren't like, there weren't many dedicated websites to commuting or touring yet, but I persevered despite the lack of uh, you know, a good support system. And it really changed my life. I actually ended up leaving that telecommuting job and uh, starting my own business as a photographer. There's this old video of me as the eco-friendly bicycling photographer where I would go to all my photo shoots by bike. And it was just a blast. I was having the time of my life. I was getting exercise. Uh, you know, I was booking shoots. I was riding my bike everywhere and it was amazing. And it was around that time I started documenting uh, my experiences online. Uh, first through a personal blog spot, then through Epicurean Cyclist, and eventually it became Pathless Pedaled. So you can see there's this really long kind of evolution of how uh, I got into bikes. It wasn't a foregone conclusion. You know, I wasn't inspired by racing or anything. You know, I had to deal with all those funny looks that, uh, you know, you get when you walk into a bike shop as a newbie and you know, everyone's giving you the elevator eyes and judging you and all that stuff. So fast forward to the present, when I think about creating content around bikes on this YouTube channel around bike touring or bike packing. I still have it ingrained in my head how intimidating uh, this whole world of bikes was as a beginner. And in making these videos, I've realized uh, unconsciously or not, uh, the way I present these videos, um, you know, the format, the content, the delivery, is all really kind of trying to help my younger self who was very enthusiastic about bikes but didn't have a good support group. You know, yes, I have a bike nerdy audience, but there's also a lot of people that are curious about bikes, um, are super intimidated and don't know where they go. You know, I think of, uh, you know, my younger brothers that all had bikes at, you know, various stages of their lives, but stopped riding. And I don't know if they watch uh, any of my YouTube videos, but I'm hoping that if they ever, you know, get their interest peaked in cycling again, that uh, they'll see these videos and, you know, aside from being the, the crazy older brother, that they'll get the information they need from a non-judgy source. When I create this content, I also think about, uh, you know, my younger enthusiastic self uh, that was really curious, asked a lot of dumb questions, and was really intimidated because, you know, there's nothing about my background that would have suggested that I would have gone into bikes. The point of this video is that we all start somewhere. And it's really easy, uh, I think, to forget once you hit a certain level what it's like to be a beginner. For me, it's it's always ingrained. I, I always tend to reflect back on you know what it was like when I first got into cameras, what it was like when I first got into cycling, into running, and what were those things I wish I had available to me. We started a Patreon uh, account last week, and there are people that signed up that have been following uh, the website from the very beginning, from when I was, you know, the weird, crazy bicycling photographer in Long Beach. Some of the comments that keep coming up that I really appreciate is how, uh, you know, kind of honest and unpretentious uh, our content is. And that is, uh, that is by design and that is by intent. So I really do want, you know, all cyclists to feel welcome here regardless of, you know, where you are at. If you're like a level 10 bike nerd or, you know, if you recently just quit smoking and are looking uh, for a way to, to get back into shape, I want this channel to kind of be a haven for that kind of conversation in some ways. There's already, you know, so many bike channels on either end of the extreme, either super roadie focused telling you, you know, about the watts, you know, how to climb faster. While I appreciate that stuff, there's a lot of voices doing that and not enough channels just trying to reach out to the everyday cyclists that you know, wants to go bike touring, that wants to go bike packing, that wants to go bike commuting. And that's where I think this channel fits in. And um, hopefully you guys can see from, you know, my history to getting into cycling, why we've taken that tact. So that's it for this video. I hope uh, it gave you guys some insight into how and why we talk about things the way we do, what to expect from the channel. Uh, I'm curious, does anyone else out there have, you know, miraculous cycling stories? Have you become a cyclist? from you know very unlikely background let me know in the comments below and uh, if you want to support content like this check out the links in the description um, there's paypal links you can support us now via patreon if that's your jam and as always and keep the supple side